Hey everybody, welcome in. It is the one o'clock hour and we have Jeff from GR Pottery Forms joining us for Clay Share Day. So we love Jeff, we love GR Pottery Forms. He has been with Clay Share since, uh, I think after our first year, he, he came on board as part of the Clay Share family. And I have been using his forms since then. I love them. Everything you see here, I made using Jeff's forms. He is offering a 20% discount today and today only. So it's a one day discount. It's just the word clay share, all lowercase, and you can save 20% off. Hmm? Everything, Jeff's telling me in my ear, everything. You guys can't hear him yet, but I hear him. Uh, he's saying, it's everything. So I am not gonna chit chat anymore. Oh yeah, but if you get some forms, get the oblong forms, you can make summertime platters. And Jeff and I have been talking, we got some awesome stuff coming uh, summertime with Clay Share and GR Pottery Forms. We're gonna have some summer, summer sets or something coming on, I think we're gonna call it, but we'll, we'll get to that another day, not today. So without further ado, here is Mr. Jeff Rotman from GR Pottery Forms. Hey, Jeff. Hello, hello, hello everybody. So Glad good to, to have you here. Okay. Yeah, and um, thought we could uh, kind of make a, a platter, a hand built platter, and uh, show you some different uh, ideas for how to address that edge. So, um, yeah, so excited. And Jeff's going to be on time because he leaves for vacation as soon as this broadcast ends. He's out, he's gone. Yes. I was, trying, I was talking earlier off here about um, that it's hard for me to use that word vacation and hard for <laughs> me not to uh, bring along pottery gear or make a trip to a pottery location. So I'm trying to focus this next four days on family time and uh, maybe some fishing time, maybe a little bit of job time, but um, mainly family time and enjoying, uh, enjoy, enjoying summer. So. That's right. So this is your, your going out making. This is the last thing you're going to make before vacation. Right yes. Now. Yeah. But like I said, I'm not leave. Uh, probably will take my phone along. So I'll be uh, watching along. Maybe as our, our permit age son is going to drive us there. So maybe I'll be oh, no. while he drives. So. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be awesome. So. All right. So what you got for us today, Mr. Jeff? Oh, I have some uh, brown clay and I believe it has some... Uh, I'm not sure if it's mold or manganese. This Maybe moldy manganese combination. Yeah, and so this batch, I'm pretty sure this batch I had saved for myself. Um, and then I just kind of randomly grabbed it here a minute ago. And then when I cut through it, I realized, oh, that's that uh, bag that has all the extra spots in it. So, uh, so it's nice and juicy clay here. But this is a Laguna 60. It's a- I love 60, it's a great clay. Yeah. And so this batch, I think they had got a new, they had a new batch of uh, manganese and uh, it was quite granular. And, and so anyway, I got the oh, first no, batch. That looks moldy, but we'll, we'll call it manganese. It'll fire. If it's mold, it'll fire out. It won't matter. I like it either way. It's all good. <laughs> either way, it won't, it won't keep those, those uh, layers like that. Nope. It'll, no. It'll just like, like, yeah, totally. So I'm going to use my rib and compress that surface. And I think this is an important part of the process with slabs is um, making sure that those particles are all aligned really well. We're kind of working on this videos. Um, we get all kinds of questions. It's really more videos to go along with our frequently asked questions and our products, especially for new customers. And uh, so right now we're currently working on this, um, this video that is, um, Kind of just showing you different edges, different sides. So, um, yeah, so it's, uh, so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, uh, yeah, I'm gonna make the, the oval one too, but then I also have one sitting here from yesterday on the side. I'm gonna show you how to finish the edge as well. So definitely ask questions. Any other questions yeah, you've been dying to And like Jessica said, um, we are having a sale for you guys. Thanks for the support of PlayShare and um, your support of PlayShare. We're offering a 20% off discount. And normally it's select items that are not already discounted, but now you can even get 20% off on already discounted items. So check that wow. out. Wow. 20% off everything, everybody. Everything. Everything. Yeah. And it's only mm -hmm. good for today. Um, 
today, much one day. A little bit of tomorrow. So uh, do it quick. Otherwise <laughs> Just plan on going vacation and having nothing left in inventory. It's like, uh, I went on vacation and there's nothing left in my shop because oh, it uh, also. Uh, the cat's gone, right? So the mice are at play. So we gotta <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, awesome. Really so. Staff I have here. We're small. There's, there's uh, five of us total. But uh, yeah. So, so because of them, I am able to go away for four days. So. What's really the, I'm the I think I'm the mouse that's going away and the cat staying here. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a question. We have a first question coming in. Um, All right, let's hear it. So the question is: They are taking their pieces off the forms after about four to five hours, and they're getting sagging on their rims. What's going on? Sagging on the rims. Uh, do you, are you using a spacer? They didn't say, but that would be a good question. If I get the info, I'll relay it to you. So press that here with uh, saggy, saggy rims. I like that. Saggy rims <laughs> happens to us potters as we get older. We get <laughs> saggy yeah. rims. Oh yeah. We have a question. I walked right into that one. That was my own fault, right? <laughs> so, is the discount available for Canadians as well? So, if people are in Canada. Oh yeah. Oh Even yeah. Even left-handers, yeah. we'll saw on the left. Yep, yeah, this guy. Everybody, uh, everyone. Yeah, okay. uh, I always like to kid with the Canadians because I used to be in golf, and uh, a lot of because of hockey, a lot of Canadians are left-handed when they play golf, anyway. And so they always wanted to know if we had left-handed stuff. So, same question. Nope. Yeah, left, available for left-handers and Canadians for sure. <laughs> the tricky thing is. <laughs> Crossing the border, and uh, thanks to those governments that are involved in the borders, the, um, there may be additional costs that are involved. So uh, that's where sometimes the shipping cost gets a little bit crazy, especially going to Canada for some reason. I'm always surprised, not even that far away, but um, yeah, everybody wants a piece of the action. So uh, yeah, so but so but yeah, we definitely in, anywhere the it's available. If you just type in uh, Clay Share and the discount code, it's not an automatic discount like we have sometimes. It's um, you have to type in Clay Share to get the discount. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Use that code. You have to use a code. That's how you get the discount this time. Clay well, Share. I don't know if you guys have, have seen, but there's some videos back on Facebook about um, how we have named all these warping things. Uh, it happens a lot we have the floppy uh the floppy which is the lip you know you're talking about probably saggy uh, <laughs> saggy floppy. Uh, um, saggy the, rim what what'd you say i said the saggy rim yeah shaggy yeah the shaggy rim we also have the floppy potato, bottom maybe potato chip is my one of my favorites and so potato chip i guess i should talk about it before i do it i always like to get ahead of myself so I put this texture in there. You can see um, I can't just roll it on. Top the top down. Are we on the top down screen or the? Um, we're on. We're on. Apparently the top. Top. Top down. All right. Let's do the top. So you can see this texture here, and you can see out of the form. So what I'm just going to do is drape the clay on top. I really like draping for larger pieces. I know a lot of people like to do. Um, Press mold, so pressing into foam, Jessica, too, right? And, yes, um, I do. It's and true. for these large ones, especially with this extra wide lip, I want to make sure that um, I'm giving it as much support throughout the process. So I'm going to drape it over the form. So let's do that. And that and floppy of, rim, the saggy rim situation had no spacer. There was no spacer with the saggy rims. No spacer, that's exactly why then, yeah, totally. Spacer you guys, you need, We need spacers for our foundation so we don't get those saggy rims, folks. Yes, so spacers. Your spacers hold <laughs> everything in place. You need support, support is key, yes. It's just, it's just one o'clock. All right, so um, folks wanna know where that roller is from. Oh, the roller, it's a, a stem, Mako, Mako. Um, Mako. I got it from Mako, but a uh, sim, I think, uh, makes it so uh i think i'm not i'm pretty sure i'm mm, either one or the other 
Mako or um, STEM. Okay. Yeah, nice. It's actually nice. I um, didn't really realize it had kind of this like wave pattern, but uh, I've been using that a lot lately. I'm just thinking about those waves and vacation. Right, dreaming about vacation. <laughs> I I might take a vacation tomorrow, one day, just one. Deal. Come to Ohio. <laughs> All Bring right, I'll drive. It takes me 16 hours, I think, to get there, but it'll, it'll be worth it. <laughs> so what is a spacer? Folks want to know what a spacer is. Ooh, Jeff. Oh, it's coming. You got to be patient. All I right. Know it's, <laughs> it's hard to wait. This is a, well, okay, here you go. Here's a spacer. <laughs> but we'll use it here in a minute. But now I'm going to use a, a little rib to compress those sides, and it works really well to make sure, again, that even consistent pressure, and by using a rib, it really helps to develop that evenness. And so I'm going to use the rib as much as possible that it allows to get rid of all those canvas marks. I know a lot of people think those canvas marks are fun and cool, but um, we really want to make sure that all these areas are compressed, and that's a good indication to know if they've been compressed or not. So unfortunately, you need to eliminate those that canvas mark. If you really like it, then I then you can get a, take a piece and now put it back on as like a texture. That's my suggestion. But make you want to make sure everything is compact and those particles are really compressed really well. And see, it's still got some of this uh, like mold or magnets in there. All right, so um, it may seem confusing, but I'm just doing this. I, this is not one of my uh, my uh, my county fair entry. I'm not trying to make this kind of strange looking piece. I'm uh, doing this to give you examples of uh, different edges on your on your platter. And to me, that's why I really like the shape, so that now you can decide that as an artist, what that edge is gonna look like, what you like, and then you can form that quite easily um, by, um, by where, how you cut it. So I'm gonna use the stew tool. I have it um, set to uh, inch and three quarters. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a quarter of this lip, just making it on my end here. And I'm just marking this out. I think I'm gonna do this one other, actually, I think it worked out pretty good uh, yesterday. And then I'm gonna go down to an inch. So I have this one is gonna be a real wide lip. And this one on the other side is gonna be a little bit narrower. This is the one inch lip. And um, so there. So all I did was the suit tool kind of helps me, especially with these oval shapes, to kind of help me develop that line and kind of have a, a reference point to cut from. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife, I'm just gonna cut along that line. And now I'm gonna kind of transition into this shorter one over here. And then I'm gonna get even closer, I'm gonna make it a little wavy. And then if I really want this really shallow, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. We'll switch around here so you can see better. I know everybody's quietly wondering what I'm gonna do next, right? But um, so I'm just gonna, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut on the edge of the form, which gives me this really kind of lovely lip as well. So we have all these different ideas. So you have choice one, choice two, choice three, and choice four. And there's probably a zillion other choices in between, right? So that's where the personal choice becomes of like how you want that edge to look like. And um, now I can remove that clay. And now here we are to the spacer Spacer um, scenario question. Actually we'll, actually, we'll wait. I always want to do this right away, especially in these demos. 
to show you, but I got to wait a little bit longer. Sorry. If I leave this, leave this kind of, um, cause usually for this edge in the spacer, I have to lift it up. So if I wait, um, leave it kind of attached pretty well, it's much easier to put my foot on there when it's kind of attached to the board. So. And this is uh, probably a, a lot of waste of clay because I like to um, use fresh clay. And then once I get a good pile of it, then I'll re uh, pug it and make it fresh again. But I do not like to like wedge the reused stuff and for the next platter. It uh, creates a lot of variables, especially these larger pieces. So if I can just set this off the side, use another fresh piece, it's going to work way better for, um, I don't have to fight it near as much. So especially if I'm making like 16 of these platters in one day and you want, you know, you're doing it more of a production wise, you, um, so that's definitely a good hint to, uh, to use fresh right out of the bag clay for every step of the process, even the foot here. We have a few questions. One, hey. how thick is the slab you were using? I like about a quarter inch, maybe slightly bigger. If you go just even a little bigger than that, it's a little more forgiving. So the thicker the slab, the more forgiving it is. Um, because you know we're stretching and and uh, and kind of hopefully not stretching too much. But if uh, you're having a little difficulty with an even pressure at the beginning, just slightly thicker will help. But really, what we're trying to do is get to. Uh, a thickness of clay that is uh, creates a nice end result. It's nice kind of weight for your finished piece. So, yeah, good question. All right. And the other question is, they are using the forms and they're stacking them, and they keep getting the lines on the sides. How do they avoid them? Yeah, yeah. You know, unfortunately, that's kind of the the case of um, if you do any slip casting, you always have these casting lines. So unfortunately, that's just the, the, um, the result of using layered forms. I always like to say that, um, you know, because really the why this works so well is because it's such an affordable price for what we're able to do. But once you add two or three layers, you start to get to um, a little bit higher in cost, right? And so at that point, it's much better to switch to like plaster. So like the ceramic shop in Philadelphia has some really lovely plaster ones. And so if you really can't deal with those lines, I would suggest um, kind of making plaster molds or thinking about a different option. But um, these forms really are really the benefit of them is to make shallow pieces, plate platters, trays. Um, and the bowls is just a little bit of a bonus. So then we have to be willing to be able to deal with that little bit of a line. So. We might get them to match better, but um, you definitely can clean that line out. The problem is if you have texture in there, it becomes a little bit more time consuming and tricky, but um, yeah. But yeah, that's a good question, good common question. And um, yeah, I know there's some other ones out there, but you, have, you could um, glue them to the layers together and then route them out. But I'm not willing to go through that process because it's, uh, I wanna make sure that the product is gonna last forever. Um, not forever, but uh, you know, it has the best chance of, of not having problems with the layering of glue or that kind of thing. So, yeah. So uh, you mentioned pugging and now everybody wants to know about pugging. Uh, do you use a de-airing pugger? What one do you have? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I don't have one. I don't have a pugger. What I do is I go to the local university and they have, there's all these students there that love to have a job. <laughs> so you make them puggers. Like, uh -huh. So that's the solution, folks. Don't buy a pugger. Don't buy a pug mill. Go to your local university and have the students pug your clay for you. They have these big, beautiful equipment from like Pizza Pugger. Yeah, so yeah, if you, yeah. If you can justify a Peter Pugger, highly recommend it. Best pugger out there. Um, but um and it's de -air is definitely key. I think you definitely want to de-air, but it works great to kind of use the resources that we have around. Or maybe there's another potter in your area that has one 
yeah, That's maybe you could funny. use theirs, borrow theirs. Yeah. So back to the stacking the forms, I see a lot of suggestions. You know, what I've done in the past, everyone is you can use painter's tape too over the seams or or something. I mean, there's there's a lot of workarounds. Anything you can come up with creative, just think outside the box. You'll, you'll come up with something. And then, um, yeah, you could make paper temp if you're using square ones. Stack, yeah, the paper one. Paper. Use paper. Yeah. Um, Do you pieces. still have uh, equilateral triangle forms? No. It's gone. I have <laughs> one. Huh. I, I have one. I guess I better not lose that. Yeah, mm. Those are collectors. Those are collectors editions now. Yeah. They're gone. They're gone the way of the dinosaur. You okay. Have, uh, so. The problem with those is um, sometimes the edges get, get beat up really quickly. Yeah. And, they're, and they teeter quite a bit. So we haven't had a lot of... Um, and so they're not high movers, so we're, we're eliminating them and replacing them with the spherical triangles. So Yeah, I love those forms, by the way, the spherical triangles and shape and squares. Those are great. Yeah, so it's kind of, it's much, much kind of more welcoming edge and it's much more uh, durable long term. So, all right. So you can keep asking questions, but I'm going to keep moving I will. along. Keep, move, keep going, keep going. So the Sue tool. Um, uh, this person has trouble with the sew tool making impression with the dull end or not getting a clean cutting line. Can you talk about where, how much pressure you use to use the sew oh, tool thing, correctly? Make sure the point is sticking out, right? It's, um, and sometimes you may have to adjust the dowel so that you get that there's more marking than, you know, the dowel wasn't sticking up too far where it's hitting the edge of this point. So you may just have to make a slight adjustment to get that that edge to work better. Um, I know a lot of the, the reason I started why it's called Sue Tool is because Sue has um, Sue, one of the ladies in my studio, which I, I love dearly. She had an uh, architectural compass that, so it had even more of a point. So mm -hmm. there's definitely other ways to do that. Um, but the uh, great thing, the reason I like this one, and you're right, the point isn't that going out as much as some of the other ones because it's a safety compass for students. But the thing that's really effective of this particular model is it has this locking gauge and it has this measuring gauge. So you can measure and you don't have to like think about how wide this is or have a, you actually know what the actual measurement is. So yeah, so I don't know if you can see it, but what I did was I made an impression of the bottom of the form which will be the, actually the word, how big the foot should be, right? This is what the, and then I can take my sew tool and follow that line. Or sorry, foot maker, thank you. Foot maker, so, yeah. I was like, sew tool, what? That's a foot maker. <laughs> you do need vacation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's natural. I always call my one, the other name, and they always kind of get mad. Oh, name is Elon. Mara Scratching. <laughs> and so now I can, I have that line on there. So now I can just follow that line and connect my cut. And the, like I said, it kind of wastes a lot of clay, but if it saves me time and, and I don't have any issues down the road, it's worth it. It's a one piece foot. That's very nice. You know, you have to make that decision on whether it's worth it or not. You'd rather recycle clay or um, have a one piece foot. And so now we have this, this foot cut out that's exactly the same size as the bottom. And so now there's no excuses out there for <laughs> you non foot makers. <laughs> but it's gonna, like wearing shoes, no foot, no shirt, no service. No shoes, no plate, <laughs> no foot, no plate. <laughs> Be a part of the club. It's like wearing a mask. You gotta be, be do it together. <laughs> <laughs> so here's yeah. a question: Is there a way to repair a chip from a dropped form? You don't. That's a beauty because of being a draped form. You don't really need to fix it because all it does is create this little tiny indentation that you can take off of your finger in like a second, where it adds a little extra clay there to where the hole was. And so you can remove that really easily. So you don't even really need to repair unless it's a major one, then um, you just need to buy a new form. But uh, um, 
but definitely I I have used forms. I was using the one yesterday for the flyer I'm going to show you here in a minute uh, from 2014. And so it does have some areas that are a little bit a little bit rougher, but it um, creates the same result. Made, to me, amazing about the, this process of draping that really kind of benefit to it. How I about do add cleaning the molds? Come again? Wash, uh, how would you clean the molds? Would you wash them up in water? Your forms? You know, I try not to use uh, moisture as much as possible. Um, obviously, if there's some mold on there or um, a, a real, like a terracotta coat clay, you're going to use porcelain, then I actually use Dawn soap and just kind of scrub it off and quick wash it off and then let it lay flat and um, it'll clean really nicely. So the Dawn detergent will clean it uh, effectively. All right, so don't submerge them, everybody. You can just wipe them clean. Yeah, don't don't put go. them in a don't put them in a sink full of water. And then, if somebody wants to make a fruit bowl, what would you recommend for forms for a fruit bowl? I would recommend like 12 and a half, 11 and uh, nine and a half. It makes a lovely fruit bowl. And uh, the stack goes on top of each other. Or like the spherical squares are really nice. And then Ooh, make those nice, would be really nice. Make a nice big wide lip. Um, nice decorative lip, and I'm almost there to show you how to make that de decorative lip effective. You know, so one key. Are... Sorry, go ahead, Jessica. You are you going to make a 14 inch uh, spherical square? I think that was the question. That was it was ways back. I forgot. I missed it. I was trying to catch it. Oh, we do so have we have, a, um, we you do have some have big a bigs. Spherical... Yeah, we have a 12 and a half and 14 right now in, in house. We have a 14. So. Okay. So everybody, if you want the big ones, go get them. Email us. If you email us, um, Sarah will help you out with that. And uh, get those on your, you still have to create a draft or add, make addition to your order. You can, um, and uh, that works out pretty effectively. And she is only here till five today. So if you have a question at nine o'clock tonight, till five. <laughs> she, will, she will help you tomorrow. So don't worry. So we'll take care of you. All right, and what about some folks want to know if they should seal them the same as they seal their wear boards? I would not seal them. And you, you definitely can, um, but for me, I feel like the main benefit of this, this material is the, that it's porous and that it helps to release the, um, create a barrier of water um, between the, the clay and the forms. So it helps it to release super well. Where if you put a release, where if you put a sealant on it, it's not going to release as as well. And so there really are there's material out there that have more um, sealant in them already, and which is the same cost, maybe slightly more, but it just doesn't release the same. So, and it, on certain technical things, so you may not notice it always, but uh, I have tested that out a lot in the past and. Um, Feel like this is the best for this process is the, the medium density fiber board. And here's one. Oh. What's a GR pottery form? There we I'm go. Just tuning in first oh. time. What what is the Come what is? In. Welcome Be in. Be careful. The water is hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting hotter too because it's only one thirty. So. <laughs> just, just wait yeah, till eight. Yeah, pottery forms are just a wood alternative to plaster for making uh, drape molds, uh, for making plate platters, trays. And the wood, it makes it more durable and more economical. So that is what GR pottery forms are. We are, our company here, we, uh, we um, are making bunch of different general shapes. You can check us out online, grpotteryforms.com. And there's all kinds of stuff on Instagram. Um, and so many people are sharing their work and making them effective. It was really fun. I wish I um, took better photos of it, but I just did a, a party for some friends of ours from church for, at the fundraiser. And it was a clay party. And um, I brought some potter's wheels and then I let them kind of help, tried to help them make lumps of clay into balls, into bowls and cups. 
But as you know, some of you that are starting out, it's really difficult, it takes a lot of practice. And, uh, and then I showed them how to use the forms and then they made these big, beautiful plates. And so they, it was, again, quite an example of how the form really helps you to have support and really gives that structure to help you develop your pieces. So kind of, it's not really meant really to be like a cheating thing, but it's really just creating support. Um, so definitely if you're a beginner, really helped me kind of progress my life in pottery along the way by having these forms that help to kind of create the shapes. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah, I hope, uh, hope you can find out some information. Definitely let us know if you have any questions, more specific questions about your pottery forms. And Sarah does a great job um, answering those, but if uh, you need some more technical stuff too, I always am available to help as well. So, yeah. All right, now we have to put on there. So I use my fun little modeling tool to kind of clean those edges. Those rubber tip um, cleanup tools work really well in that process as well. I know Jessica loves those. I have, I know she see her using those <laughs> often. I do love mine. It's true. Your, your cleanup tool. My color shaper or rubber tip tool or, yeah. yeah. So did you, what did you use to attach the foot? Just water or did you use vinegar or Just anything water. fancy? Sometimes, like this clay is a little firmer than what I used yesterday. It's, um, I only use it if the clay is a little bit firmer because uh, we can get away with not having that on there. So, yeah. And then uh, if you're going to add handles, would you add the foot, the handles after you add the foot? Okay, I'm jumping the gun, am I? <laughs> no, 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 good. Like handles, um, handles are definitely something where I would definitely want to use moisture and maybe even some slip. But I, I would add, um, I would do add them when they're leather hard. Um, I would make the handles at the same time. And then once the piece is cleaned up and trimmed, then I would add the handle. I should do that. I should do it um or maybe Jessica's doing too. Oh um, yeah, just put it yeah. me. <laughs> well, yeah, because you're going on vacation, I see. And so I'm leaving. <laughs> Jess can do it all. No. Jess does it all. <laughs> Jess does it. So, uh, well, I so. think you should explain to people who are just tuning in what's going on with that platter. Like, why does it look so funky? It's all getting lippy there. Oh yeah. So I'm trying to give you some examples of like how you could cut the edge to make it look different. So many of us, you know, we have a narrow focus of like, okay, this is how it has to be made. This is what somebody told me how to make it. And this is what I'm going to, to need to make. Um, and traditionally, when we use molds, we didn't really go outside of the edge of the mold. We, we just stayed on the edge. So what I'm trying to do is give you permission and, and also ways effectively do that is to make that exterior lip, which I would call more of a fancy or formal more decorative lip. And so it really changes your $15 tray into this like $60 platter. So just right. by adding an extra strip of clay around the outside, right? So it all depends on what you're doing, what you're going for. And so all from like simple little coin containers or jewelry containers to like something that you're gonna serve the, the the traditional family turkey on, so. That's right, Thanksgiving dinner platter, which I taught a yeah. class on, using GR pottery forms to make yeah. a turkey platter. So, yeah, so spacer so let's, time, let's huh? Lips here now, that is a good segue, I love it, you guys are good. <laughs> now, if we were to leave this on here, this part, this really wide part, is gonna start to curl up as it dries. This is all dry mainly from above, so. What we want to do is use a spacer to kind of help us in that. So what I'm going to do is lift this up. And the other thing is that we talked about that floppy, saggy lip. You know, it, there's no support for that if we just left it lay on the, on the board because it's going to start to do its own thing. But now what if I do, if I add the spacer to the to the um, board here, I'm going to go sideways so maybe. You can see that. And now if I press down, you can see how there's a gap, a space between, um, it's about a half an inch, right? That's how thick the spacer is. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down this outside edge and it's gonna develop an angle 
which will then help itself support itself in the firing. And if you just push down the outside edge and hit touch the board, you're going to have a nice consistent edge. Now on this other side, it was only an inch. This one was inch and three quarters. This one's only an inch. So you can see this side becomes really steep. A lot of times people call them, you make it, make it look almost like a bowl. Let me see if you can slip this one out here. Thank you, Shelby. I don't know if you can see from that front camera. You probably can't really very good. But this side is way steeper angle than this one because of that width. So this is a woo, this is a <laughs> blow your mind kind of conversation here. Just from that simple spacer, like you know, this angle is steeper if the clay is shorter. If it's really long, it's going to be a real shallow angle. But we definitely want the angle to help us to, to um, be able to withstand the firing and have a decorative edge. So does that make sense? Where on this other side, there's no spacer needed. One side, I might shape it downward just a little bit, just to kind of let it all blend together better. But um, but I don't, want, I don't want to push it all the way down to the, to the board. I don't can see that. Put it on here again. So there we go. So I don't, um, I don't mess with the, uh, I don't mess with it, like cleaning up any fussing with it all too much. Cause I fuss with it right now. Um, <laughs> I wait till it becomes leather hard and then, uh, then it's much easier. It reacts much better to, uh, to fixing it. So. So here's, here's a question. Do you have any forms that would be good for a butter dish bottom for carry gold butter? For carry gold platter? Butter for carry gold butter for like the big block butter. Yeah, well, uh, I always use a uh, five by eight because it works great for a stick of butter, and then you can make a nice fancy um, lid. But I think yeah. it also works really well for that big amount yeah. of butter as well. Yeah. So, so the answer is yes. The five by eight. Five mm. by eight would be my butter dish. It's my butter dish size. That's right. That's what. I have a butter dish, I call it a butter box class, and that's what I would oh, yeah. probably use to a butter box to make a big, okay. big, big, big holds a lot. So here's a, here's one. Um, do you plan to ever make rim templates for any of the rectangular or square forms? Great question. I love that question. And unfortunately, I don't probably have the answer that you want. <laughs> My answer is no. <laughs> you, you you could say maybe. Someday I mean, somebody will work with you oh, to yeah, design oh, them for you. Oh, possibly, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I should never, you no should never say no. You should never say never. You don't know what the future has to hold, sir. No, totally. I, I, like, <laughs> I like that using the word vacation. Like, uh, I just <laughs> practice saying no. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, and my reason is, is because. Uh, I feel like it really kind of, I mean, if you want this cookie cutter class that um, makes you have a certain kind of piece, but if you want to have any type of uh, element of it being your own, and then it really uh, helps you to um, decide what that edge is going to be. And like Jessica has too, is like classes on how to develop your own template uh, to, to make it something that you really like that really fits you and fits the, uh, um, the glaze that you're going to use, the surface design, the clay. And so I feel like it's kind of limiting when I decide what um, that, that edge is going to look like. So I feel like it's much more fun and more sustainable for you and me if um, are you, you are deciding. And I think uh, it's just part of the, just like you have to determine, well, somebody could determine it for you too, but, um, you know, figuring out what clay you like the best, you know, type of thing. So. Yeah. Maybe somebody will help you out with that, Jeff. You don't have to worry about it. Somebody else will help you determine the edges for your form. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, so what else we got going? Someone's asking, how long do you leave it on the form? How long do you leave your clay on the form? Perfect. So this one I made yesterday afternoon. I left it uncovered for this rectangle one for about five hours. And then I covered it up just so it went. Go to mark, and now here it is. 
And you can see I that if I pick it up from one side, it's not flexing at all. The other thing, this is the, um, another one of our kind of warping things, is you may have heard the term banana. We're calling them banana, uh, where, where it starts to kind of curve up. And what we want to do is just put this down onto the board and now press that down. So the clay is still able to be flexed if we put a lot of pressure on it, but general pressure, it's not moving. So now it doesn't have that, that banana, it's straight. No banana. No banana. And F, that's not the same clay, the two pieces, everybody that he's using. It's not the same clay. So I don't think yeah. the one that he just took off the form is the dry version of the one that's on the form. It's, Thank you for pointing that it, out. So this, it's yeah, different. This is the one somewhere. <laughs> This is a brown somewhere. Again, trying to give you more ideas of like it's not just one size fits all. It's uh, you can kind of determine those factors. And so, just a quick kind of cleanup. How I would clean up these edges? Oh yes. These from the top there. Now what I can do is I can if any, anything got uneven, then I can. And this is why I don't always pre-cut my slabs. One is I don't want to make that decision. I hate making decisions ahead of time. <laughs> but two is I always want to change my decision. That's more the reason why I don't want to make decisions is because I always change. So now I can kind of clean that edge up based on what happened with the clay. So, and I use this rasp, but it's a Stanley. You can go to your local hardware and get it. And, um, or you can get it from us online for 20% off. And uh, yeah, and so now I use this. I, obviously I can't use this in this little tight grooves, but um, for those other kind of longer pieces, I would. Sorry, I'm kind of moving around pretty fast here, right, Tony? But, but um, for these kind of tight grooves, what I want to do is use this little uh, cleanup tool, like a loop tool, and that will help me clean up those edges. And I want to kind of, round off that square cut edge, right? It's really got a kind of stiff edge. So I want to soften that up, make it welcoming, make it fun to touch and for your family and friends who want to grab onto it all the time, carry it around to show everybody or those customers of yours. And then same thing on the bottom, I would just kind of use this edge to kind of clean up those tools. So I kind of do a, like a rough cleanup. And then, then I come back over because it looks pretty rough right now, right? And I come back with the, uh, the rounding rib and now kind of just burnish and soften up that edge. And this works, you could really use a sponge if you're using like B-Mix or a soft clay body. I like to use clay with grog in it. So then I kind of have to use this, uh, this rib because otherwise that grog kind of makes lines in the edge of the piece and then it makes it unwelcoming to touch. So I go around each of those edges with that. And uh, one quick little thing here. I haven't even taken another package yet. I had a these temper tools. You can get them at most of your local suppliers. They have these little um, drills. Oh yes, they're quite nice. Yes, I have a couple. Those are very nice. And now, if Just you want to make temper clay drill hanging flatter, where it's really a decorative thing, what we could do is just put a little hole in our leather hard. Put ideal time. And then we could easily put a wire through there awesome. and make this hangable on, on, a, on a wall. So there so we go. So many ideas. Woo. All right. I was lots more questions. People have, if you have questions, email Jeff uh, at grpotteryforms.com. Right, you can email Jeff or info at grpotteryforms.com and get answers to all your questions because there's so many questions we can't go over them all during this session. Woohoo! Because there's a lot, and we'll have Jeff come back and do more with us 
more demos, tutorials, stuff. You want stuff from Jeff, he'll, he'll have him come back. But he's got his own channel. You should be following Jeff. He has a YouTube. He has his own Facebook. He does demos there. So you should be following Jeff because he'll give you thank little you, tips. Thank you, Jess and Kevin, for all you guys thank. do. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity uh, to be working with you. You guys do amazing thank you. job. Thank you for being part of ClayShare, Jeff, and uh, have an awesome vacation. I'm a little jealous that he's going, to, he's going away. So <laughs> I know. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to take a break now. We'll be back at 2 p.m. Eastern time, which is uh, 7 o'clock in the UK, because that's when Mr. Lee Pollard is going to be tuning in with us from the Great Pottery Throwdown. So come back and join us in 15 minutes. Get yourself a drink or something. Walk a little bit. Stretch 